Hi everyone and thank you for joining me for another flip through of my creative journal. This time we're going to have a look at the month of November where I journaled every day using a variety of mediums like paints, watercolours, stickers, paper scraps and ephemera. I wanted to take a quick moment to say a big thank you to everyone who has subscribed to my channel. I recently hit 800 subscribers since I started this channel a few months ago and it really means so much to me that the videos I'm putting out there are connecting with you guys. I have a lot of fun making these videos and I'm really grateful for your support. For anyone wanting to know, this journal that I'm currently using is an A5 blank Midori notebook which I have painted and decorated. Okay, so this is November 1st. It was a fairly chilled out day, so I reflected that by using some gorgeous bits and pieces that I cut out from some magazines. The little face down the bottom is part of a collage sheet from James Luke Burke. He's a very talented artist on YouTube, so I will leave a link to his channel down below if you want to check him out. Next we have something a little different. I carried the writing all the way across both pages. The illustration of the woman here was something that I tried out for myself after watching a little tutorial by Jane Davenport on her website. And then I went ahead and drew in a woman and painted her with some watercolours. This is one of my favourite journal entries purely for how simple and gentle it looks. I received some happy mail that day and I love the little stamp on the envelope so I peeled it off and stuck it at the top of the page. I was basically talking about my love of sending and receiving handwritten letters through the post. I decided to do something a bit different with this spread and I'm so happy with how it turned out. If you do follow my Instagram account you'll notice that I frequently post sketches. And on this day, my husband and I were watching Stranger Things too. I drew this portrait of Eleven using a few grayscale Tombow brush markers and then I used a waterproof Unipin pen for the smaller details. This is the 5th of November, which was a Sunday. We decided to have a relaxing day together as a family and I kept the decorating pretty low key. Both the tag and the journaling card were made by me, as was this die cut of the girl with the pink hair. As you can probably tell, I was feeling a little moody this day. I was feeling a bit anxious and stressed and that's okay, like not every journal entry is going to be about having a perfect day. It's my life and not every day is going to be ideal, but it still deserves a place to be written about. Journaling really does help me deal with things going on in my life and it helps me decompress emotionally. For anyone who has already subscribed to my channel, you would instantly recognize this journal spread. I have a process video where you can see me put these pages together after my daughter and I had a nice day out at the park. I will put a link to it in the top right hand corner so you can watch for yourself. This was a hard day. My baby daughter was grizzly the entire day and refused all of her daytime naps so I got absolutely nothing done. Her grandparents babysat her for a couple of hours that night and within 5 minutes of being with them she fell fast asleep. <laughs> Moving on to the 9th, I spent most of the day drawing the finishing touches on a commission artwork. I used some watercolours and then went back over some areas with a dark blue matte acrylic paint. As you can see, there's barely any warping or buckling on the pages. I'm really impressed with this paper and I do recommend it a lot. I really like this journal entry, it's so different and charming. I follow a fantastic artist on Instagram named Samantha Russo. I printed out a free downloadable art print of hers and then I cut out this sweet little bird design from a magazine and I stuck it onto the front. I used it as a tip-in for a really sweet photo of my husband carrying our sleeping daughter. I also painted the date header with some light blue acrylic paint but I dropped a blob of it on the other page so I turned it into a random illustration of a blue haired lady. This entry was super quick and easy to make. I misted the pages with some pale blue watercolour and then I added some Jane Davenport collage pieces. This journal was all about making time for self care so I went ahead and added this quote down the bottom which says you owe yourself the love that you so freely give to other people. I went a little bit crazy with colour here but I kind of like how it turned out because it's so different to what I would normally do. One thing that I enjoy about creative journaling is it allows me to try out new things. I used a bunch of Mambi stickers and washi tape and I also stuck in this gorgeous owl printable made by Ali Brown. Again I will also leave a link down below in the description box to her channel. 
the paint on the previous page bled through a tiny amount so I covered it up with some scrapbooking paper. It wasn't a lot but I wanted to do a black, white and pink combination and there was a little bit of blue coming through. As with any paper, it's not completely infallible but considering it's not even marketed as mixed media paper in the first place, I think it still holds up really well. At this point in the month, I was reaching a state of burnout. It's something that comes and goes and every time it appears, I like to pull back a little bit and remind myself not to get so wound up on things. I was feeling a bit frazzled and I even threw away an illustration that I had been working on for about two days because I just wasn't happy with it. I felt like I had wasted time and I kind of think now that every perceived failure is just an opportunity to learn and grow. I absolutely love this design but before I go any further I must give all credit for this painting to an incredible Danish artist named, and I hope I'm saying this right, Met Lindbergh. Her link is down below in the description box if you want to go check her out. I had a migraine the entire day so I was feeling pretty miserable but by that evening all I wanted to do was paint so I decided to recreate one of her paintings as an art study. An art study is an intentional duplicate of someone else's work to explore their techniques and colour palettes purely for your own personal insight. But you must never claim the work as your own, so please do check out Met as she is so gifted. November 16th had me doing some much needed inner work. Again, if you're subscribed to my channel, I made a process video for this spread as well, which I will leave a link to in the top right hand corner so you can watch it if you would like to see how this came together. Journaling is a great way to remind ourselves of the good things in our lives, especially as it is so easy to become negative. Here I used some patterned paper and matching stickers from Daphne's Diary magazine. I really like the woodland aesthetic, so I even went around the edges of the craft paper with a Tim Holtz Distress Ink in the shade Vintage Photo to make it look more earthy. I finally saw my daughter get up on all fours for the first time that day, so it won't be long until she is crawling around, but I'm happy that I got to write about it. For this day, I didn't really have a plan, I simply started throwing blue watercolours and acrylics onto the page. It reminded me of the deep sea, so I added some more Jane Davenport collage elements to tie it all together. The shell sticker at the top was a sticker set that I purchased at IKEA of all places. This is one of my favourite pages. I had been forgetting to use my Tim Holtz Distress Stain so I dabbed a few different colours onto a plastic sheet and pressed them onto the page. It was a very quick and easy way to colour the pages and I really like how it turned out. For the journal entry, I alternated between using a white gel pen on the blue background and then a black waterproof pen as it faded out into the distress stains. The art print that I popped onto this page is a gorgeous mixed media printable created by Adele over at Inky Quill. As always, I'll leave a link down below in the description box so you can go check out her channels. Alright, so there was bound to be a journal spread that I'm not a fan of and it has to be this one. I simply laid down some washi strips and painted over the top of the open areas with some watercolours. But for the most part, there's something about these pages that aren't really my cup of tea. It's probably the colours that I used, but that's the thing about these journals, if you don't like the way that it turned out, you can just turn the page. Tuesday, November 21st was a fairly dull day, so I kept the pages fairly simple. Before I started getting into creative journaling, I found myself stuck with all these gorgeous pattern papers that I didn't really know what to do with. I think it's a nice and easy way to add character to your pages. So I added in a quick sketch in the corner and splattered around some ink and I like it a lot for its simplicity. Here's another day that wasn't exactly fun. I spent most of the day adulting and dealing with super fun grown up issues like tax and paperwork. So that night I set aside some time to listen to some relaxing music and I painted without rhyme or reason onto the pages. I've always been a big believer that art is therapy and it's an outlet that anyone can benefit from. If you follow my Instagram account, you would recognize this journal entry that I posted recently. I'll leave my Instagram account down below in the description box so you can follow me there if you want to. These kind of pages are more in line with what I like to do because it has a bit of everything like photos, ephemera, illustrations, typography and of course the memory that I'm 
documenting. I watched the film Wild starring Reese Witherspoon and I really enjoyed it. I've always liked Reese and I thought it would be fun to draw her so I used my same grayscale Tombow markers and drew a little tribute to her. Friday the 24th of November was the day that my Chic Sparrow Traveller's Notebook arrived and I was so excited. It's my first one and it literally took me months to decide on the size and what leather I would go for but I actually filmed an unboxing video which you can check out by clicking the link in the top right hand corner. The brown paper was also the original packing paper in the box so it definitely belonged in my journal. This was a really quick and easy journal layout. I blobbed some paint onto the pages and used an old credit card to spread it around. And then I added some washi tape and doodling with a waterproof pen. This is another one of Ali Brown's owls and it's so peaceful looking that it captured the vibe of the day. These pages are loud, bright and chaotic and it was so fun to dip into this style to shake things up a bit. Here I use several pieces from a collage sheet designed by Courtney at Little Raven Inc. As always her link can be found down below in the description box so make sure that you check out her channel. These gorgeous illustrated characters are so dreamy and I think it fit the memory of that day which was enjoying a barbecue lunch with the family on a bright sunny day and then all of us lounging around after we had stuffed ourselves with food. <laughs> I kept things simple with these pages and I loved how the watercolour has pulled in different areas. I also used some gold Heidi Shine colour shine around the pages to give it a beautiful magical quality. I even applied the same colours onto some plain washi tape and used an old Project Life card as a tip in. As we head towards the end of the month I encountered a bittersweet moment in the form of selling my daughter's bassinet on the Facebook marketplace. I wasn't quite prepared for all the feelings that bubbled to the surface as the customer drove away with it in the back of her car. I know that might sound kind of trivial but it was my daughter's first bed and it was like a stark reminder that she's no longer my tiny newborn. It's true what they say, the time really does fly by. But that's the reason why I journal in the first place so that these special moments are captured forever. A bright and cheerful day calls for some equally vibrant pages. Here I used several Tim Holtz distress stains on the left page and stamped out the word Wednesday using a grunge style Kaiser Craft alphabet stamp set. The orange washi tape and the pattern paper by Amy Tan on the right really captured the warm summer vibes that were making themselves known that day. And here is the last entry for the month of November. I was in a bit of an expressive, carefree mood and started throwing anything cool toned within reach onto the paper. Several strips of washi tape around the edges add some cool texture as do the small collage paper stars that I sealed with some matte medium. Here I wrote about some final thoughts for the month as I prepared for the next one to begin. And that completes the flip through for the month of November. I will include a sped up flip through of these pages for you to all watch in a moment. I just wanted to take a quick moment to thank you all for joining me today and listening to my stories. As I mentioned earlier, I've recently surpassed 800 subscribers here and I'm so grateful for every one of you who has taken the time to watch my videos. And if you haven't already and would like to, please hit the subscribe button down below, give this video a thumbs up and also leave me a comment down below about which journal entry was your favourite. And also let me know if you're currently keeping a journal too because I love hearing about how they're helping people. Alright everyone, until next time, bye bye.